Good evening. I'm going to take my mask off. I'll stay six feet away from everybody, I promise, just so you can understand it. I thank you, citizens, for coming out to, to this meeting this evening to talk about rezoning of Oakley High School with, with Bridgeview High School. So I know that uh, uh, you have other things to do on a Friday night, so I appreciate your advocacy and being here for your student uh, tonight. I just want to make sure I went around the room and I tried to talk to everybody who didn't have the time to do so. I just want to make sure that you're here for the, the correct meeting. About half the people I talked to had read something on Facebook and were here and, and attending a meeting that didn't even affect them. Right? So for this meeting, you would have received a letter in the mail. So a physical letter in the mail. And you would have been, you lived in the communities of Pine Ridge, Two Creeks, Fox Meadow, or Whispering Creek. So if that doesn't qualify, or if you, that doesn't affect you, you don't live in those areas, and you didn't receive a letter, this meeting has nothing to do with you. Yes, ma'am? If you live in that area and you didn't receive a letter, does that mean it has nothing to do with me? If you live in any of those four communities, I would say, yes, ma'am. Well, because I didn't get a letter. Okay. So, so a couple things about this evening. I want to first go ahead and introduce you to the folks that are here this evening uh, so that you can see who's going to be here and who's going to be addressing you and the information that they're going to bring forward. So first, let's just kind of go around the room. We have Matt Boyd at the current principal of Oakley High School right here. We have Becky Murphy, who's the principal of Bridgeview High School. We have Daryl Sweat, who's the director of transportation. We have Ms. Janice Kirikas, who's a school board member. We have Ms. Clark, who's a school board member. We have Ms. Gilhausen, a school board member. And our school board chair is Ms. Fole. In addition to that, we have Jim Fossa, who is the coordinator of planning and intergovernmental governmental relations. And we have Bryce Atlas, who's the assistant superintendent for operations. So this is kind of a group of people that would have the information relative to this particular issue uh, that we're talking about here this evening. A couple things about this evening that I would point out to you is that sometimes on social media, um, how many people go on to social media? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Right? Uh, there's always sources of information and people say all kinds of things. That's why I kind of walk, walked around personally to as many people as I could to find out if you're really here for the right reason. So this evening, here's the plan. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Fossa. He's going to kind of show you the affected neighborhoods and why, uh, why those neighborhoods are affected. We're going to also have uh, Ms. Murphy, the principal of Richard High School, come up and give a presentation. We're going to have a question and answer period for that. If you have a question that you would like to ask, where's Ms. Pickett? Right here. Ms. Pickett, right here with her hand raised. Just raise your hand, she'll give, you, she'll give you a card and a pen to write down the question. We'll collect those questions and we'll answer all the questions that you have at, at the end. So that's, that's kind of the plan for this evening. So with that, we're going to turn it over to Mr. Foss. Do I need the mic? Do I need the mic? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, I will need the mic. I will need the mic. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out on a Friday night, a rainy Friday night on top of that. So what I want to tell you and show you is how we came up with our actual different scenarios of what we need to do. The biggest thing to realize is that right now, Oak Leaf High School is overcrowded. They have 106% of capacity right now. If you were to look at these numbers here, Oak Leaf High School has 113 classrooms and they got 120 teacher allocations which means they have more teachers than they have classrooms. Um, if you look at Ridgeview, Ridgeview's got about 111 classrooms and 98 teacher allocations. This has been a, a situation that's been going on for a couple of years now. And with the, with the new road coming through, there's a lot more development that's going on. I kind of want to walk you through that development and show you why this is definitely necessary. So what you're looking at here is this sort of this, I guess, maroon color is the school attendance area for Oakleaf High School. And you can see the location of Oakleaf right here. 
And over here is the attendance zone for Ridgeview, and there's Ridgeview right there. What I look at as a planner is I look at natural boundaries, I look at railroad lines to divide lines, I look at major roads, I look at, um, I guess, electrical easements, things that are natural boundaries to sort of partition out the county. And we have this for elementary, we have it for junior highs, and we have it for high schools. Uh, some of them have been in place for a long time, and we've done very little changing over the years. I think the only changing that we have done was actually when we built Discovery Oaks Elementary School. That was the last time we did any kind of, of um, rezoning or, or changing the boundaries, and that was for a new school. So I just kind of want to show you some of the numbers. Our current situation is Oak Leaf is at 106% and Ridgeview is at 67%. Uh, we're looking at projected growth of about 250 new students within the next three to five years. And I just got a call today from a, every, every week I sit on the planning commission and there's an um, on next Thursday, there's a development review committee where there's going to be a new development and it's called Kendallwood East. So if you know where Kendallwood is, there's going to be a new development going right next door to that. And that is smack dab in the middle of Oak Leaf's attendance zone. Here's Kendallwood right there. Kendallwood East is going to be right in here. So they're coming. And I have a future slide. I'll show you all the development that's in the area that's been planned or uh, actually underway and some of it's near completion. So what's the remedy of it? Um, if we did nothing, Oak Leaf would go to 115% capacity. I, I don't see how that could happen. Um, and continue to grow. And of course Ridgeview would stay the same because there's very little growth in the Ridgeview area. So what's the remedy? We looked at all the different things, like the dividers I was talking about. I was looking at area, what's closest to other things. The state also has a mandate where they want us to be balanced. And you can see that we are not balanced. There's no balance there. And when I talk to the state facilities, they're for, what are you doing about balancing out your schools? So this is one of the things that they push as well. So I looked at this area here, and those numbers are more for me. The program that I have labels that as 9A and the program labels that as 26. It really doesn't mean anything, it's just for me, so I can go ahead and, and look at that. So if we did move these students, about 300, give or take, um, Oak Leaf would go to 93%, which would allow for growth, and Ridgeview would go up to about 81%. Does it fix Oak Leaf's problem? For now. But with more growth coming in, you know, I might have to look at some other stuff down the road a piece. Um, I do want to point out this note here that if you're traveling from this area to Oak Leaf, it's about 6.2 miles. But from this same area, sorry, traveling to um, Ridgeview is about five miles. It's a little closer. Um, when you come, and when you're in Fox Meadow, you have to go down to Old Jennings to go up. Um, but you can just easy drive right across and be right there at Ridgeview. So what we're looking at here is the Oak Leaf area with all the development that's in there. There's 10 developments that are either near completion, in the middle of construction, or on the books getting ready to get started. And they're scattered all around. The only one that's really in the area that we're looking at for Ridgeview is this Fox Meadow Unit A, which is right here. If you've been down Old Jennings, you've probably seen there's like a fence that kind of blocks it off. There's a, there's a customer that wants to buy. We got a call from Orlando and they wanted to know all the concurrency about this particular neighborhood. So there's going to be, it's going to be purchased and built pretty soon. It's almost across from Linda Lakes. If you know where Linda Lakes is, it's almost right across from that. And these are the same numbers that I was talking about earlier. These are the neighborhoods that would be affected. Pine Ridge, Two Creeks, Fox Meadow, Whisper Creek. Also north of um, Old Jennings Road, all the way out to Jennings Forest, and south of Trail Ridge Road, um, all the way east to the current boundary for Ridgeview, and then west as it runs into where the power lines are there. This is what it would look like after the change would be made. You can see um, this is the current lay of the land, and then this would become part of Ridgeview here. So we had a workshop on the 12th of January. 
we presented lots of different, uh, we presented some different uh, options. And this was the option that we looked at and said this would be the one we would like to go forward with. So what was the outcome of this option? And it was the Ridgeview plan. If we did the Ridgeview plan, it would go into effect for the following school year, not this year, of course. It'd be the following school year. Rising seniors or current juniors would finish out their high school career at Oakleaf. So if you're a junior and you're going to Oakleaf, you can come here next year and you can finish out your career here. If you're enrolled in an academy at Oakleaf, whether it's ACE or Aerospace or the, the, um, the technology, graphic arts, whatever, you can remain at Oakleaf. Transportation to Oakleaf High School will be for the academy role, uh, enrollees that are rising seniors only at this time. So if you're a rising senior and you're in an academy, you would get transportation to the school. If you're in another grade and you're in an academy, you can still go to Oakleaf, but transportation is going to have to be provided um, in another means which is sort of how we do it at another school. If you're, if you're zoned for Clay High School and you want to go to Oakleaf and be in the aerospace, you can do that, but you've got to get transportation there. And transportation, uh, of course, will be provided to Ridgeview um, for all eligible students that are eligible. I'm sorry. The academy transportation. If you're if you enroll into an academy, yes, that's how we do it all across the county. So again, let's say you live in um, in the Orange Park area and you want to go down to Fleming Island to be in one of their academies, you can do that if they bring you in. But you, you're gonna have to get yourself there. Um, I'm gonna if those questions right. I hope did you write your question down and we're gonna get uh, Miss Pickett will take it and then those questions could be the folks of the. I'm, I'm not gonna get into Daryl's business because he's a transportation guy. And this is gonna recap, just kind of showing you where the different areas are. And these are these are the mascots for Ridgeview. You're going to go in as little, little teeny cubs and come out as panthers. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that really concludes the part that I wanted to be able to share with you to see where we, how we, de how we derive where, where we are now. And it's not going to be the end in the future because there's lots of growth coming here. And that's just the way it is, with, especially with the new road coming through. If you look at the, I'm going to ramble a little bit, sorry. If you look at the Lake Asbury area, where the new highway is going right through, there's nine developments going in through there. It's going to be 2,300 kids that we're going to have to place in the Lake Asbury area. So everybody wants to be here. Um, when the state came through two weeks ago, they had already been over to St. John's, who's getting 26 new schools. 26. I don't know how they're doing it, but everybody wants to be here. And they have to redistrict or change their zones almost every year. And they're going to go through a massive change um, over in St. John's County so that they can put people in those 26 new schools. And we've been fairly lucky because we have done very little of it um, over the past 10 years. Okay. Thanks. Yes, sir. Just a couple of things. You know, we certainly realize and fully fully understand that change is not a is not a thing that people generally welcome. I can tell you my own job three different times, including his junior year in high school, uh, went uh, uh, to a different school as a result of redistricting. We recognize that. But when you're talking about this is really well, sorry. <laughs> So, so in general, almost 2,900 students at Oakleaf High School. That is a lot of students. I'll just tell you, I was. Um, you need both mics, so you can clip that one on. And okay. One's for the camera, one's for the audience. <laughs> I know. 
So I, I will just tell you, I was principal here from 2010 to 2015. Ms. Pickett over there was principal here from 2015 to 2020. And now Mr. Boyack is, is the current principal here. You know, the more students, you know, our goal is always to provide a world-class education for all students. You know, and sometimes difficult uh, decisions are made in that process. You know, and so I recognize that a change, no matter what that change is, doesn't seem like a good thing. I think it's almost human that that's our first instinct, that's our first go-to is, I don't like it because it's a change. I get that. Yeah, I totally get that. And that's why you're all here. I understand that. At the same time, sometimes change is a good thing. You know, and so I'm asking you to have an open mind when it comes to this particular issue. And so here to kind of uh, tell you a little bit about Ridgeview High School, and I, I see you brought troops with you, it is Miss Murphy, the principal of Ridgeview High School. Do I gotta do both? I'm going to use the podium, Mr. Brosky, if you don't mind. Thank you. And I'm also going to remove my mask. Um, to go off script a little bit, I was where you were two years ago. So I was the principal at Lake Asbury Junior, and I knew I wanted to go to a high school. Um, but honestly, Ridgie had not been on my radar whatsoever. And uh, the then superintendent uh, placed me at Ridgie High School. And that whole summer, I mean, I was excited about the possibilities, but I didn't know Ridgeview. Um, I had taught at Wilkinson Junior High School for my first five years as a teacher. And then I had gone to Lake Asbury Junior High School. Um, I was an administrator at Fleming Island high school for four years and so I was like okay Ridgeview here I come um, and I change was hard you know as far as that summer that first day students stepped onto that campus I fell in love uh, with Ridgeview High School uh, I think they can tell you in the back um, how, how happy uh, I am being there and what a wonderful you know wonderful family but if you'd asked me at the time you know I was I was sad to be taken away from um, my school at Lake Ad Barry Jr., but that change has been such a blessing to me. So I do want to thank you all for coming tonight. I know as a parent how hard it is to give up a Friday night, a rainy Friday night at that, and we do appreciate you being here. Um, I do want to take a minute to just thank the people who came out tonight from Ridgeview. Please, 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 if you get that opportunity, stop by and try some of our amazing snacks uh, from our culinary department. They are very delicious. Um, we get them quite often there at Ridgeview. Um, and the other people that we have around the room, I am going to let them go by 8, so um, you know, if you would like to see them and you kind of keep track of your watch. Uh, it's a Friday night for, for those students, too. But thank you guys for coming. Can we give them a big uh, round of applause? I'd like to first play just a short three-minute video for you um, that just kind of showcases our school. Thank you. 
the uniqueness, like everyone has the opportunity to find their group. If you go out to the courtyard, you'll see all different groups interacting before and after school. Um, at the end of the day, oh, we really just care about our students here, and we want them to feel safe and welcome and have a positive experience as they prepare for their futures. As you can see, Ridgeview truly is a great place to be. And while we're not trying to compete in any way with what Oakleaf has or um, take away from their school in any, in any way, we do believe that we're one of the best kept secrets in Clay County. Comparatively, we are one of the smaller high schools with a current population of a little over 1,500. And even with the rezoning, our school would still be under 2,000 students. And we believe at Ridgeview that that's, that really helps us kind of be that smaller family and, and have more of a connection um, than some of the bigger campuses. We are a diverse group with many cultural and academic backgrounds, but we truly respect each one's individuality, their uniqueness. Tonight, I want to highlight the many opportunities our students have at Ridgeview to grow as individuals. To begin with, we have an amazing choral and band program. We're proud that of the 95 all-county chorus students last year, 41 of those were from Ridgeview High School. And we have an incredible a cappella group, duly noted, who are simply outstanding. Standing. Our band program placed eighth in the state in what's really kind of one of the most competitive categories um, in last year's state marching competition, the highest ranking for our school thus far, and the indoor percussions placed fourth. If you ask what Ridgeview is really kind of known for, I would definitely say it's our stellar theater program. We have one of the biggest theater groups in the county, and they take on directing, stage design, costuming, and acting. Last year, they performed Hairspray right before um, we had to go on the COVID shutdown, and it was simply amazing, and we're looking forward to their upcoming production this year. Our students also have the opportunity to grow their artistic talents in an array of art classes from creating pottery pieces to digital photography to 2D and 3D art. And we just learned yesterday that 14 of our students, the most for Clay County, will be recognized at the Northeast Florida Scholastic Art Award Show. Our NJROTC unit is the biggest and most successful JROTC program in the county. The program emphasizes leadership, citizenship, respect, and responsibility. Individuals who succeed in life have usually developed strong self-discipline and sound character, and most importantly, the ability to lead and motivate others. And NJROTC strives to instill these traits. They've done some, uh, they go on pretty amazing trips. They've been to the Paris Island Marine Corps boot camp, and this year, um, hopefully, with COVID, they'll be heading to the Key West Naval Air Station. And they are really like a big family. Our older cadet, cadets take care of our younger cadets. Um, and it's a good place to make friends. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to join the military by any means. Our culinary program, which hopefully you had an opportunity to sample, is, well, they're outstanding. And it provides students the opportunity to learn about cooking in a commercially licensed kitchen on our campus. And I'm going to tell you, I enjoy their food quite often. Students learn how to prepare and cook everything from desserts to scallops. 
just uh, a few weeks ago, the culinary twos and threes made, um, they got to make their own soups. Then they started, you know, homemade soups. You know, me, I pour mine from a, a can, but they uh, made it from scratch and they were delicious. As students progress through the program, they also have the opportunity to compete in events. Last year, they won second place in the Moon Over the Market competition, and they won first place in Gourmet Meal, Outstanding Appetizer, Outstanding Entree, and second place in the Waiter Relay at the Daytona State College competition. Students interested in exploring education as a possible career choice enjoy our Academy of Teaching and Learning. This academy prepares our students for an entry-level position at the child care, in the child care industry. Students observe and interact in a variety of settings with our on-site child care center, Little Paws. And the Academy of Teaching students, they plan lessons, they read stories, they create crafts, and they spend time with our littlest panthers on a daily basis. Our digital design, broadcast journalism, and cyber security pathways offer students an introduction to a wide variety of career paths with a goal of preparing tomorrow's workforce. These classes immerse our students in earning industry certifications where they develop, create, and edit a plethora of projects. Additionally, they learn networking fundamentals and software security. For our students who like to work with their hands, we offer courses in air conditioning, refrigeration, and heating technology, as well as building construction management. These programs offer our students practical, hands-on experiences in designing, testing, and repairing heating, ventilation, and air conditioning and cooling systems, as well as in areas of carpentry, masonry, and construction project management. As mentioned in the video, we're the only IB program in the county. Students choose the IB Diploma Program for a challenging academic curriculum, a student-centered approach, an international mindfulness, and it's just a respected, reliable, and renowned academic program. We also offer other acceleration opportunities. We have over 20 AP uh, courses that our students take, and this is, will be our very first year of AP capstone graduates. Students have the opportunity to take dual enrollment classes, and each year we graduate students who have, they graduate with both their AA as well as their high school diploma from St. John's River State College. Athletically, we do have a strong program. We're not quite as big as Oak Leaf, um, but we do have a strong program that focuses not only on the craft of the athlete, but also on their overall character. Since 2016, Ridgeview Athletics has had over 50 students sign national letters of intent to continue their education and their athletic careers at the collegiate level. We were also, and are very proud to have been, back-to-back -back FHSAA Fred E. Rizel State Sportsmanship Award winners, and with our volleyball coach in the back, we were six Pete volleyball district champions. That's kind of hard to do six years in a row. Our girls weightlifting team last year won district and regional championship. Two years ago, our softball team made a final four performance, while our baseball team has made it to regionals three out of the last five seasons. We have numerous individuals who compete at the state level in swimming, diving, track, cross country, and tennis. We are also, um, we were the first to institute the Athletic Leadership Council with our students. So um, our students have the opportunity, our athletes, to kind of not only grow athletically, but to grow as leaders. And they've done things, um, they do a lot of community outreach with our sister elementary school, Ridgeview Elementary, um, and they, like they do toy drives, they go over. We haven't been able to do it this year with COVID, but we used to go over once a month um, where they would welcome the elementary school students onto campus with dance, you know, dancing and music and fun and high fives and hopefully we'll be able to get back to that when things go back to normal. Ultimately at Ridgeview we have great students and I know while you may be disappointed that your student may have to leave Oak Leaf High School, I want you to know that our school is amazing, that we're led by talented teachers and supported by a strong staff. And you know what? We all come together to create that Panther family. I'm very proud to be part of this school. In my mind, one of the greatest strengths of Ridgeview is its culture for learning. Our teachers push our students to think critically about the world around them, and they provide opportunities for our students to learn collaboratively and with their peers. They they read, they solve problems, and they conduct experiments. They challenge our students to think beyond their first initial thoughts to really delve into that deeper learning. If you were asked ask me to sum up what makes Ridgeview so special, I would tell you, Ridgeview cares. We care for each other, we care for our futures, and we care for our community. We thank you for allowing us to share a little bit about Ridgeview with you tonight, and please make sure you stop by and thank these amazing students and teachers who came as well. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Miss Murphy. There's no doubt Ridgeview has a lot to offer, as you as you can hear. Now, some of you have already written out questions, but if you have a question out there that you would like to ask, Mr. Karen, go ahead, raise your hand, Ethan. He's got cards. Just raise your hand. We'll get you. We'll get you a card. Now's the portion of the program where we want to answer your questions. So we have Miss Pickett. Who better than the former principal of Oakleaf to ask the questions, right? Go ahead, Ms. Pickett. What's the, what's the first question in between uh, Mr. Sweat, Ms. Murphy, Mr. Boyack, Mr. Fossa, myself? We'll do our very best to answer the question. If not, I'll get a hold of your name, number, and I'll make sure I call you personally with the answer. So go ahead. All right, the first one has to do with uh, just growth and rezoning. So why has the county allowed for unfettered growth without accurately projecting school zoning heading into the proposed rezoning? So I think the question is growth. along the lines of growth and, and so, I, I would say this, the rate of growth in our county has accelerated the closer we get towards the completion of the Outer Beltway. You know, I don't know if you mentioned to him, just yesterday, was it yesterday that we found out about, uh, about the East today, about a new development. So, you know, development, you know, public school has to serve every student that moves into that area, regardless. We don't control the speed in which they move into that area. And then we attempt to plan so that we provide the best world-class education for students. Let me take this off. I feel like I'm mumbling when I have these things on. So that's kind of what's happened with Oakleaf High School. Uh, Oakleaf High School, even when I was here back, you know, six, seven years ago, you, know, you could sense that Oakleaf was a big school. We started to add more portables to deal with growth. Well, we've run out of room to do that. I think uh, 40, is that the number, Mr. Boyack? Yes, sir. 40 portables out back. So if you've never taken a tour of campus, I, you know, I talked to a couple of parents out there that were parents of freshmen and, and perhaps an OCO student that hasn't gone here physically. Back behind here, there's actually 40 classrooms back deep. And, and one of the, some of the challenges with that in portable classrooms is one, to get students from, from one part of the campus to another is a huge undertaking. As you can imagine, making it from one part of this campus to the other in a five minute time frame is a challenge. Now, I always told students you can do it if you don't talk to anybody and you move fast, you know, along the way. But yes, growth is an issue. I consider it to be the, the biggest issue that we'll have in the next four years in Clay County Schools is how to keep up with the growth that we have. There's future plans for additional schools buildings coming down. The, the next one is planned for 2023 off of 315. So there, there's a whole process involved in this, uh, in dealing with growth. And that not only deals with Mr. Fawcett and his office, but also the state of Florida and the Department of Education that has to approve those plans. So in this particular case, what you're seeing is a school that has 106% capacity and another school, right, 106 is past 100, past capacity, right? And then you have another school with 67% capacity. The expectation of the state and DOE is that you're going to balance those schools, and, and it kind of makes sense. So yes, totally fair question, whoever asked that. Will my school tax go to Ridgeview after rezoning? Your school tax? The taxes that you pay, I guess they... The, the taxes the now they would they get uh, they actually go into the county and to actually they go to the state and then come back to us from the state so yeah nothing has changed has changed in that respect what do you say to the families that purchased homes in the last two years specifically to go to Oakleaf high school yeah I, I certainly know that that feeling you know, my own child, his junior year of high school, went to a different school. We had actually built a home in a community, hoping that our child would go to that school all four years. No doubt, it's, it's not a good thing. I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that I certainly understand. I understand it personally, three times in my, my own children's academic career. I totally understand that. I'm also asking, for you to just kind of take a step back from it and say, uh, I understand that change, I understand the need for change, and, and give it a shot. 
I mean, nobody likes change, uh, including myself, right? So I totally understand. It's a fair question. This was from Ms. Murphy. What is the uh, school rating for Ridgeview High School? I'll try to stand away from you. It's okay. We are actually one of um, one of the schools in the county that's ranked um, nationally. Our state um, our state score is currently a B. Uh, we've they've raised uh, before me the principal before me, myself, Mr. Gretos, who's who's here, um, as well as our administration team um, have been. We, we thought we'd be an A this year. Um, part of that comes from the fact that we are one of the largest, actually we are the largest um, ESC school in the district. So we have the largest self-contained populations, um, which it's amazing. They are, uh, gosh, they're such a huge part of our Panther family. Um, we have Spirit Club, we have Special Olympics, all of those, those things, but that plays into um, our grading system as well. Um, but, there, but as far as being, because of our AP scores, our um, IB program, we're, um, we're one of the nationally ranked schools. Thank you. There were a couple of questions about buses, so um, why don't we just, I think, in the, uh, for time-wise, why don't we just review the bus uh, plan, transportation plan. That would answer several of these questions. Okay, is it on? Okay, go ahead, I'm, I'm waiting. What, what, you want me to talk about it overall? Okay, so. I think there's like four or five questions here, so I think if you just review transportation, it would okay. cover these questions. Yeah, so if you're a junior and your student's gonna be a senior and you stay at Oakleaf, you're gonna get transportation if you get it today. So if you qualify for transportation today, that won't change. Um, any student moving to Ridgeview, if they qualify for transportation, which most will in these subdivisions, we will provide a bus for all those students to go to Ridgeview. So um, if you qualify today, you'll qualify next year. Uh, as far as the academies go um, and the special uh, placement of students, I mean, the, we normally don't promise transportation, but we do have a way to do a courtesy where, you know, it's not guaranteed, but if we have room on the bus and there's a bus stop close to you, we try to work that out within our department. So usually two or three weeks into the school year, we, we can see that. So, um, so nothing will change as far as student transportation. We'll make sure all the students to get transportation today, or if you're going to Ridgeview and it's more than two miles away, we will provide transportation. Is, that, is there a question so specifically? Here. Even if parents would provide their transportation to Oakley, they would still need to go to Ridgeview, even if you could provide your own transportation, correct? It's not, attendance is not based on transportation. That is correct, yep. Why does the district keep building elementary schools and not a high school? And two creeks school. Yeah, I would, I would say this, you know, uh, high schools have a greater capacity and can afford a greater capacity. If you take a look at Fleming, high, I, Fleming Island High School is around 23 you know, hundred students, so they're, they're getting towards their capacity also. High schools simply have a greater capacity due to the nature of a high school. You, you can see just by looking at this high school cafeteria, this is a huge cafeteria. If you, if you have a child in elementary school, you need to go visit an elementary school, you know, cafeteria, much, much smaller. So the simple answer is high schools can, can accommodate the larger numbers. Okay, for Mr. Boyette, there's a couple of here uh, questions about academies. Um, what are the academies offered at Oakleaf? For example, commercial photography technology is listed as an academy, yet the whole is not an academy. 
Okay, so yes, officially there are two academies at Oak Leaf. It is the Aerospace Academy and the AgriScience Academy. So where there's a lot of confusion comes in with, we have a number of CTE programs, as does Ms. Murphy, um, and, and a lot of the school districts offer a lot of the same programs when it comes to those CTE programs. Um, so uh, she already listed a number of hers as well, but the only two official academies at Oak Leaf High School are AgriScience and Aerospace. Okay, Ms. Murphy, do you all have photography? Yes. Okay, so um, since I'm a student at Oak Leaf and I currently take photography, and so uh, well, how will this work if Rich you does not? So the person that wrote this question, Rich you does have photography. Yeah, we, um, is it on? Oh. It's on the side. Sorry. Push it up. Thank you. Having trouble working the microphone. Yes, we do have photography. We have uh, one of our art teachers, Mr. Nisi, um, does the photography uh, classes. He's one of our CTE teachers. Well, he's actually one of our art teachers who has that certification. He is a um, he he does photography on his own outside of Ridgeview High School, and so we're able to offer it that way. Ms. Murphy, do you have a step team? We had so we did have a step team, um, and then last year our two spot one of our sponsors went on to be an AP at um, Oak Leaf Junior, and so this year we didn't have any sponsors step forward, and uh, that we the students came to us and asked um, could they do could they have kind of a step slash dance team, uh, and they found a sponsor, and so they just performed uh, their very first I think they performed six routine six routines at our first uh, basketball game after Christmas. They were scheduled to perform at tonight's basketball game that we have home too but it, it did get canceled tonight but we just kind of started it back and so I want to say we have a total of 10 students currently boys and girls um, involved in that okay great and um, question about credits uh, my question is about credits and I think what they're asking is will credits transfer from yes schools? yes yeah um, how many students currently attend Oak Leaf High School that aren't zoned for this school? There's currently 46 students that are out of district students uh, here at Oak Leaf High School. Uh, I can just tell you from back in the day, 2010, I know that's always been a concern. The district always tries to monitor those individuals that register to come in, requiring proof of residency, et cetera. Can I guarantee with 100% certainty that every student in every Clay County school is a student that lives in that attendance zone well you guys know the answer to that the answer is no but the myth that there's hundreds and hundreds of students at oak leaf high school that shouldn't be at oak leaf high school just doesn't bear out please understand i can just tell you as a principal once i think i'm embarrassed to admit this i was driving here and i saw a car coming all the way from the other side coming this way and they let a student out and I thought oh I got this student this is not an Oakley student well you know what that was it was a split family mom lives in one area dad lives in the other area and he just happened to be at the other parents house driving there so I think it was a good lesson for me that sometimes you think you know what's going on and you really don't and that was a time where I really didn't but yeah there's 46 out of district SPEs to Oak Leaf High School. And just um, as a review, I have two students, a junior and a freshman. I think that's current junior and current freshman. Um, can they both stay, which would be a senior and a sophomore next year? So the, the answer to that question is the, the current junior could stay, but the other grade level was Freshmen, Freshmen to sophomore. could not stay unless they're currently enrolled in an academy. And then the transportation again for the senior? Uh, yes, would be provided. Okay. Um, and I think we answered the other question because it said if they stay. Uh, and I know you have, you don't have a crystal ball, but what is the likelihood of rezoning happening again? You know, I. I don't know what the answer to that would be. You know, I, I really can't make any promise here today whether there would be rezoning. It would make sense to me that at some point, whenever that is, there would be rezoning. 
If I take a look at it, when I first started in Clay County Schools, there was 16 schools. There's currently 42 schools. So, yes, I'm old, and I've been around a long time, okay? So over that time, they built that many schools. They redistrict a bunch of people over those 30 years to get to where we are. So redistricting is going to happen again. The real question would be when and how fast, because you could just see that. If it goes under that pace, there would be 80 schools 30 years from now in Clay County schools. But I can't really predict that. I do know this, uh, Oak Leaf is a, is a high growth area and there's still active growth within the Oak Leaf area. So. Um, what happens to juniors and seniors? It's a good question. What happens to juniors and seniors who transfer into Ridgeview? Will they be allowed to join the academies? From, from my experience, when someone transfers in as a junior or senior, they are denied um, entering the academies. So how would that work? You want to answer that one? Um, on, honestly, it would depend on if they've been taking the classes. So the reason why they typically aren't in, led into academy their 11th or 12th grade years because it's a, it builds on itself as 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade years. So for example, if your child had not been part of the teaching and learning academy and they wanted to come in their junior year, they could take early childhood one, but they wouldn't necessarily be in the academy of teaching and learning because to be in the academy, you would have taken all four years in in, in that program, if that makes sense. But that doesn't stop you from taking an elective. Um, we have tons of students uh, who their senior year choose to take Culinary One or who will take the early childhood class or who'll take, um, you know, our HAVAC classes. But if you're wanting to earn like the industry certifications, typically those are our four year programs. Does that, did that answer the question? And Mr. Boyack, I think that that's applicable across all high schools, correct? So just because you're changing as a junior, if you didn't change, you wouldn't be allowed to enter an academy at Oakley Theater, correct? Correct. That's a policy across the board. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I asked a question. So uh -huh. typically, once again, the commercial photography is still my daughter is going to be here at this program. She has many photographs. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, we, it's a class, a class for us. It's not an academy here or there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So we, we have the Adobe certificate. We have the same certifications. So I think the confusion comes in that CTE, each school's only allowed a certain number of academy pathways. And what, what it means by academy is that they are co kind of cohorted together, kind of like ACE and IB, where they, they're supposed to have the same English, you know, like your cohort of 100 students who have the same English teacher, the same math teacher. And so those teachers plan, it's almost like a team, like you have in junior high school, those teachers plan to together for that academy and so Oakleaf has those two academies we have the Academy of Teaching and Learning and I've, I've missed Tucker what is our other it's the construction yeah so I mean like the same thing like we have CTE programs that are four years but they're not considered like an academy but we do have the industry certifications that you're referring to it's just not an academy just like it's not an academy here does that make sense? I know it's kind of confusing, but it's... We might have some time mm -hmm. at the end, if I'm correct. We might have a yes. couple minutes at the sure. end where mm -hmm. you might could ask her specific questions. And even with Mr. Boyack, can compare the two programs together. So give you a little piece of mind. And, and just, so you, just so you know, I'll, we'll stay after. Ms. Murphy will stay after. Mr. Boyack, we'll, we'll answer any specific honed-down question you got. 
Photography seems to be the big topic, so I'll, I'll, those of you that ask photography, if you'll just check with Ms. Murphy uh, afterwards, then that would be great. All right, uh, will rezoning the junior high for these neighborhoods ever be considered to help ease the transition socially for these students? These well, neighborhoods right. are currently zoned for Wilkinson Junior High. You want to answer? So just to get the, I'm gonna make sure I get the right question here. So will rezoning be looked at for the junior high specifically because these kids right now go to Wilkinson Junior. This is something that when we're looking at these, we're looking at the schools that right now are at capacity. So that's why the focus has been on um, this particular school. And I realize that Wilkinson is very far from here and it hasn't been a focus for me. So I will promise that I will go ahead and look at that, at that area to see about distance because that is certainly one of the, the things that's concerning you folks because Wilkinson is almost 30 minutes away from here if we're out in this area. As a matter of fact, um, the new neighborhood that we just talked about um, at uh, Kendallwood East will be zoned for Wilkinson Jr. as well. And that's much, much further. I do want to let you know that I sit on the Planning Commission for Clay County and I'm only one vote. So when a developer comes to the Planning Commission to look to put in a development, I can get up and say we shouldn't do this and point it out, but there's other commissioners on there that go ahead and do vote those in. So it's up to me to go ahead and try to convince them in another way or we try to mitigate that with um, there's other areas whether we can rezone or we can um, level the schools and that's what we're trying to do now. So the, so, the, so the purpose for tonight is to share the information that we've shared with you and answer any questions you may have. The actual official vote of the school board occurs at the, at the March school board meeting. So the board will vote uh, at that point. They're going to uh, vote to advertise it. I believe the 26th is the date of that. And then um, a final vote I think is March 4th. Is that the correct date? Is, is March 4th. I will say this, um, you know, having sat in the meetings and, and listened to school board members go back and forth, uh, a lot of good discussion, a lot of careful thought, and a lot of realization uh, and care by board members that this is a tough, this is a tough decision. Would they, pardon me, believe me, they, they understand that this impacts people. A lot of, of great discussion relative to that and trying to protect uh, folks the best that they can. At the same time, at the end of the day, the board needs to make a decision to provide a world-class education for all students. And when you start to go past